Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com. Welcome to the update for Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. We're back to our NFL previews, and we're right smack dab in the middle of the NFC North. We're going to be talking about the Chicago Bears in just a moment. Also, uh, talking a little Taiwan baseball. First, a real quick note. Uh, if you've yet to become a member at DocSports.com and just want to jump on board for a trial run, you get a free 60 bucks. And the way you do it is you just click on that link, uh, in the box below the video and get yourself set up for that free $60 account. There's guys that are giving out uh, horse racing. They're giving out soccer, Nicaraguan soccer. Uh, I myself am doing some Taiwan baseball, as are a few others. So you can use those free 60 bucks on any handicap of your choice on their daily package. and uh, Or you can just get on board. And when uh, North American sports get back underway, all the major sports, you'll be able to use that also, that free 60 bucks. So the link's below the video in case you are interested. All right. Taiwan baseball. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to preview uh, the upcoming Chicago Bears 2020 campaign. And when I look at what William Hill has sent us, they've got uh, plus 450 on the Bears to win the NFC North. The over under win total eight and a half unders minus a buck 25. Over eight and a half wins is plus a dollar five. If you think the Bears are going to get over that eight win mark, uh, quarterback controversy, as you know, Nick Foles coming to Chi Town, Mitch Trubisky, uh, the uh, remaining and returning. Uh, a quarterback for the Chicago Bears, so they'll fight it out. Listen, here's the thing. This team does need a few th a few things to shore up on both offense and defense. When I look at offense, I'm looking at that offensive line. Uh, no more Kyle Long. He called it quits. Uh, so you've got some issues and some positions to fill up front on the offensive line. You've got a wide receiver issue. I like Allen Robinson. I like a couple of their wideouts. Uh, for instance, I like Riley Ridley, no doubt about it. But they don't have any speed burners, so they got to go out likely through the draft now and try to find somebody with some serious speed uh, that translates from what's on the paper for the Chicago Bears into what they do on the gridiron itself. And at defensive back, uh, they got to fill both corner and safety roles uh, at defensive back. They lost a couple of players from last year. No more Prince Amakamura, no more HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix uh, for this team. So it's a situation where they're going to have to fill some major gaps, I think, for the Chicago Bears this upcoming season. I, I don't like what they did in the offseason as far as free agency was concerned. Uh, we talked about going out and getting Nick Foles. That's fine, whatever. Uh, but they could not resign Leonard Floyd. He is now going to be with the LA Rams. Uh, they go out and they get rush in Robert Quinn. Here's the thing about Quinn. Quinn was fantastic in the 43. But Quinn, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to translate into this 34 that the Bears are playing. I, I don't think that Robert Quinn is going to be nearly as effective in the 34 base defense as he won in the 43. I just don't think that it's a good fit. And of course, Jimmy Graham, I mean, his better days are behind him. Jimmy Graham getting long in the tooth, a little gray in the beard. And uh, I just am not crazy with what Chicago did in the offseason. Their saving grace is their strength of schedule. I score a 127, which which means it's 21st as far as the difficulty of schedule. And that means it's the 12th easiest slate in the NFL heading into the 2020 season. And the way I do my uh, strength of schedules is I look to see the teams that my particular team I'm handicapping at the time are going to play and what the projected win totals are at the sports books rather than looking at what happened with those teams that are playing the previous season. Much better gauge when it comes to setting your strength of schedule. But I look at who they're playing and they've got the 12th easiest schedule in the NFL. They get Detroit twice. There's a team with an over under wins total of six and a half. They get the Jaguars. They're five and a half. Uh, they've got a couple of teams, in fact, with win totals of five and a half. Not just the Jaguars, but the Carolina Panthers. So, you know, the road schedule is not overly difficult to at least pick up a couple of wins. Do I think they're going to get to nine wins? No. At eight and a half, I really think the Chicago Bears are priced slightly too high. I don't think they're going to get over eight wins. I think they're a team that's probably going to be right around 500 with what they've done in the offseason. And of course, as the schedules fall into place as far as not just who they're playing, but when and where they're playing these teams and how they go in order of the se uh, schedule, the 17 weeks, 16 game season, uh, we'll be able to once again go in, uh, redo our strength of schedule, and maybe we'll think that Chicago can pick up one more win or two more wins that we didn't feel at this current time uh, in the middle of April. But as of right now, I think the Chicago Bears are at best 
that's an eight-win team, and you can get uh, right now plus a dollar five in some spots on under eight and a half wins. And again, at William Hill, also you have to lay a buck twenty-five on the under. But I think it's a situation uh, where if you just shop around a little bit, you'll get a little bit better price than that. But I'm saying under eight and a half wins for the Chicago Bears in 2020. Again, we'll update all of these when we get closer to the actual start of the season. And as COVID-19 continues to be defeated, uh, then we'll be able to uh, obviously find out when we're going to get an NFL campaign. I'm here at the latest late September, early October start. Super Bowl, if that takes place, would be in late February. Uh, so we'll report it as we hear about it. Chicago Bears under eight and a half wins is what we're saying, at least in mid-April of 2020. As far as Taiwan baseball, there's still only been one game played at a couple of the rainouts. Uh, they had a game that went to extras the other night, and uh, that was uh, a weird game because we've talked about the high-scoring games of the Taiwanese of the CPBL, the Chinese Baseball League, uh, usually have. I mean, they're 13% more scoring than you see in Major League Baseball. And then we get a game that goes into extra innings, tied at one the other night. Uh, final score was four to one, Uni over China Trust. Now, we do have a game that started, if you're watching this before 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific on uh, Tuesday morning. We do have a game uh, that is going to be taking place at that time shortly after 5 a.m. Eastern. Excuse me, that game, as I look at it again, is a 6.35 a.m. Eastern start, 3.35 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday morning. It's Fubon against China Trust. So second game for China Trust, they're 0-1. First game for the Fubon Guardians. One thing to note about Fubon is last year they had the, the league's best ERA. They're not a high scoring team. They tend to try to play lower scoring games in what is a high scoring league. In China Trust, we saw them score a grand total of one run against Uni, who allowed uh, six and a half runs per game a year ago. Uh, so that's why you're seeing this low total. I see it as low as nine, and most books have it at nine. Some books open nine and a half, but these books that do have it at nine, there's even an eight and a half. I'm mean, you're talking major juice on the over. So we've decided to pass uh, Tuesday's game. I will be in action Wednesday. There are two games on Wednesday. Both start at 6.35 a.m. Eastern, 3.35 a.m. Pacific. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning's video. But we will be in action with those early Wednesday morning starts, 6.35 a.m. Eastern time. Those will be posted for me at DocSports.com on Tuesday after 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Anytime after that, again, over at my handicappers homepage, DocSports.com. Just a little note there, if we had to jump in on Fubon and China Trust, um, I would likely lay that real small price on Fubon, which it isn't real small now. It's about a buck thirty at one point. Well, William Hill, for instance, has them as a short underdog around plus a dollar ten or so. You can also find minus a dollar fifteen on Fubon. So again, it's one of those situations where if, if you have the outs, you can find Fubon at a real nice price. Not an actual play. It's an opinion. And that's the play for Tuesday. We will be in action again on Wednesday. And I will have one of those two games as a free play when I post a video. We'll do it Tuesday, early evening Tuesday for Wednesday. But again, uh, our uh, over-under win suggestion for the Chicago Bears is under 8.5. That'll do it for today. We'll be right back here. I'm going to get the Tuesday night video up no later uh, than 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific time, which will give you a solid 8, 8.5 hours before for uh, those early Wednesday morning Taiwanese baseball games get underway. So be sure to check back then. Hey, if you like the videos, click on the thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. We'll talk to you Tuesday evening for Wednesday baseball. We'll see you then.